I forgot. I thought I lived more than once. Now I'll jump off the cliff. I bought 500 worms that arrived at my house yesterday. Never done that before. The cows will just burst. They'll literally burst. We're just a couple of business anchors. Welcome to the Business Anchors Podcast. This jingle is slightly too long. This jingle is slightly too long. Welcome to part two of episode six where we're talking about bad advice. And in this part, we're going to be talking about bad life advice. And we are going to be talking about what we spoke about in the previous episode, which is really, really, really interesting, which is how you can prevent cows from bursting, which is uh, some advice that I received previously. So I'm really looking forward to I'm sharing intrigued. that with you. Um, and me and Dan are going to have a, a bad business advice speed round where yeah. we're going to fire some bad business advice at each other and see who can uh, yeah. come up with the worst advice. I think there's lots to learn from this episode, though, because there'll be... Yeah. From the, ba- from the terrible shit advice, you can actually gain a lot by thinking, do the opposite of that. Yeah, well, yeah we should, probably should communicate that, shouldn't we? That yeah. this whole, We're not just hugely negative people. <laughs> Let's do an episode about bad business advice. We're actually thinking, yeah. you, can, you can learn from this advice like we have yeah. and do the opposite. So, so tell us, Lloyd, in terms of, like in the last episode, we focused heavily on bad business advice um, mm-hmm. and, and what we can learn from that. What about kind of life advice? What about non businessy stuff? Because lots of listeners don't give a shit about business. They just listen to hear our strange stories mm-hmm. and things. So what have you got for us? Uh, well, one of the worst pieces of advice that I really get frustrated with and I have done for a few years now is YOLO. <laughs> Anyone know what that means? YOLO? <laughs> I do. So for, for the older people in the audience, uh, my <laughs> age... You sound so sad. So my nice. age. Uh, YOLO stands for you only live once. Yep. And um, what frustrates Great me... Great phrase. Is, so, so growing up when I was younger, if it was a fashionable phrase to say when I was in my late teens, my friend James would have been constantly saying YOLO because I love him, but he's, he's someone who takes a lot of risks and uh, would always persuade me to try and take those risks with him. (laughs) He would have been shouting YOLO from the rooftops. So what annoys me is you only live once. Mm. People try and press you into doing things. So it's like, Lloyd, jump off that cliff. And if I say, if I make a decision in my head, "Mm, I really value my life and I also (laughs) value my legs. So thinking about everything, the the things that could happen that are quite bad and quite likely to happen, I'm not yeah. going to jump off that cliff. Yeah. And their response to me saying no would be, go on, mate, you only live once. <laughs> and I'm supposed to go, oh, yeah, <laughs> I forgot. I thought I lived more than once. <laughs> now I'll jump off the cliff. <laughs> um, and, it, yeah, it just annoys me because I think it's something people mm. use to try and make you do things that yeah. you don't want to do. And I get that sometimes trying new things is good. Yeah. I try new things all the time. Mm legal things though like what buying worms in your wormery like yeah. you did recently i bought i bought 500 worms that arrived at my house yesterday never done that before so you know yolo <laughs> uh, <laughs> you're definitely getting older lloyd yeah i uh, just i just hate it's one of those things mm. uh, a similar thing is um when when people um like are horrible to you and then mm. to to make it seem like um, you shouldn't be making a fuss about them being horrible. They go, <laughs> are you joking? Calm down. <laughs> and then you can't say anything back to it. Oh, okay, yeah. Oh, it's a joke that you're just swearing at me constantly. <laughs> okay, a good one. It's like when people yeah. say YOLO, there's mm. not really... Res- you're like, if, if I responded like yeah. I'm thinking, I know I only live once, but I value my yeah. life and legs. Uh, you know, it's not I think right. a more... Like going the opposite end of that, a more sort of insightful approach, things that I've learned from... It might have been Gary Vee that said something like this, and I know he says a lot of shit, but something that actually made me think is when he, he ages ago he said this thing about going to an old people's home and asking them like about their life and what they regret or what they don't mm. regret, and 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 understanding that will help you make better decisions. Like they won't regret not buying a new car or not, but but like the things to do with the things mm. that actually matter, like seeing your family and all that kind of thing. I think that will help you make sort of better decisions rather than just thinking YOLO think like what would I actually yeah add to my life but then at the same time YOLO (laughs) so 
yeah, yeah, that's a really good point. So yeah, sorry to have a bit of a YOLO rant. I, oh, even saying it, I sound like an old oh. man. I've just been just been discussing YOLO with some of the, the younger <laughs> do, people. Wait, do at that work. in the radio voice. Do that in the as if we're on the radio. Right yeah, now. we've just been talking about a phrase that I've heard recently called YOLO. Uh, it actually stirs for something quite interesting. It's uh, you only live once. Y O L O YOLO. Um, and I've actually been discussing it with some of the younger listeners uh, recently to hear what they think about it. And uh, yeah, it's a really interesting story. If you've got any interesting stories about YOLO. Y-O-L-O, you only live once Then uh, give us a call um, But for now, we're going to listen to Daniel Benefield, Gotta Get Through This Do you remember that song? Yeah, it's such a tune Anyway, the radio oh. DJ voice hasn't appeared for a while, has it? No I was, I was thinking whether to do it And then I just thought, you only live once, Lloyd <laughs> So I'm just going to do the radio DJ voice You are so sad um, Anyway, but Dan, yeah, I, I, have, have you got any... Um, yeah, away from business. Any bad advice in your life that you think? Yeah, I think the whole sort of thing around not doing something because you might look stupid. I don't know. I remember, especially growing up, you always want to try and. I remember looking back at me when I was younger, and I was just a right idiot. I think looking back because I was just trying to be, trying to fit in, trying to um, conform, and and just didn't want to do anything that was too out there because. I thought people might think I'm stupid and stuff. And I think when I've, especially when starting the business, doing at the time, like creating videos of me on camera saying stuff about marketing, I remember loads of people that I knew sort of saw them and thought, oh my God, you look stupid. Look at mm. that. Like, and you then, did. Yeah, I did look stupid. Yeah. Looking back, they were terrible videos. We actually did a reaction video to some of my mm. first videos, which is good. Yeah. You should see that on my YouTube. Um, but then when I look back to those things that I did that... Um, made me look a bit stupid and pu- push myself out of my comfort zone they're all the things that have helped shape who I am now which sounds like I'm I'm reading out of a really cringy quotes book saying this stuff but it's just it's true like I think not enough I even want to do this myself try and try and do more things that make me feel uncomfortable because otherwise you just end up coasting don't you mm. I think yeah <laughs> I just did that oh, thing yeah. yeah 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 no I, I genuinely think that, yeah. And I, I think I'm quite good at that, personally. Mm. But only only recently, I feel like I've got good at not really caring what other people think now. Well, when you were younger, in what year was it? When you oh, had your magic I, tissues? I, Lloyd well, used to... <laughs> <laughs> oh, <that sounds. laughs> so, just, just for context, <laughs> listeners, uh, when I was in reception in year one at school, so four or five years old, um, if, if anyone ever spoke to me, um, then I would burst into tears. And um, Mrs. Lowers, lovely lady, used to get her magic tissues out, mm. which I've recently found out um, she was completely uh, pulling the wool over my eyes. They were, sta- they were standard Kleenex tissues. Oh, not the magic ones. No, she said they were magic. That stopped me crying. Mm. Um, I don't really understand why this fit into the, the story, but I just had to give I think, context. Uh, yeah, I can't remember. I just wanted to say about you crying loads cool. when you were younger. Cool. Great. Thanks, mate. Um, but yeah, oh, just on the, on, the th- on the point of crying, this is random, but <laughs> have you seen um, Ricky Gervais' Afterlife? Uh, so the, the first ne- series the new the new season's out sorry this is completely out of context but it's, if you want a good Netflix show I've been watching it with Christelle like every night this week this will give us a reason to put a clip on social media and tag Ricky Gervais yes. and hope that he retweets it yeah Ricky Gervais just just don't make it obvious okay oh Afterlife's so good yeah I really enjoyed the first series but I haven't had a chance to watch the second series yet Dan. well Lloyd you should because oh. it's really good yeah and I just really admire Ricky Gervais <laughs> Such a good guy. Yeah, not obvious. But yeah, as I was saying, Lloyd, it um, I just been watching it and just crying loads every night. Yeah, see, that's it's 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 I just can't. In the first series, um, basically Sarah used to just fall asleep on the sofa while I sobbed on my own, <laughs> and I just I can't. I really enjoyed it, but I also when I'm choosing what to watch at the moment, it's kind of thinking. Oh, do I want to cry alone tonight? Yeah. Or uh, I'd really advise against having a couple of beers and then watching it. Oh. <laughs> the emotions. Oh. My eyes were just streaming for about yeah. an hour. <laughs> yeah, and I'm I'm an emotional man, so yeah. I'll be crying a yeah. lot. Um, again, no idea why we were talking about that. <laughs> so we, we were talking about bad life advice. Yeah. What other anything else, Lloyd, that you've had? Like, what bad life advice have you had that, that's memorable? <laughs> well, my, <laughs> I'm laughing just thinking about it. My oh, laughing so much I knocked the microphone. <laughs> Sorry, listeners, if you heard that. Um, so, a few years back, when I first became vegetarian, 
Oh, no, not this one. Some of the funniest advice that I've ever had. Hopefully you'll find it's funny because I can't stop laughing even thinking about it. <laughs> um, I said to a guy, I think I was recently gone vegetarian. He said, oh, yeah, yeah, I get that. I get being vegetarian. Like, that's all right because you can still eat, like, cheese and eggs and milk and stuff. And, and yeah, I understand that. But And, and I've always wanted to be vegan and I kind of go in and out of being vegan because I'm rubbish and I can't stick to it. But um, he was saying, but vegans... God, that's just stupid. Why would you ever be vegan? And I was, uh, because I was, felt quite uncomfortable at the time, I just sort of went, yeah, <laughs> why, why, why would you? <laughs> Even though I completely disagreed with everything he was saying. I'm just trying to not have, uh, just not create conforming, conflict. Won't you, yeah, oh, yeah, vegans. Oh, yeah, I can't believe it. And then his next point, um, I'm trying to think, was this bad advice? Yes, yeah, I think it was because it makes absolutely no sense. So yeah. he said, he started talking about was his serious advice as well he was deadly serious there was no element of joking and he said to me what I think is really stupid about vegans is do they not realise that if you don't drink cow's milk they won't need to milk the cows and then the cows will just burst they'll literally (laughs) burst and I again, and was, wait, again, wasn't this in a business setting, like a really professional? Yeah, yeah. And again, not wa- not wanting to cause conflict. I think my reaction was something like, huh, "Yeah." <laughs> so, but, yes. So, so the bad advice is, if you're considering being vegan, please don't, because it will cause all of the cows to burst. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's that's bad advice uh, that I. I just I think that is really stupid though. That's. Well, you know, if you don't know how uh, how things work, because obviously animals and humans produce milk when they, they're, they're pregnant and they've just had a, yeah. a baby. So cows don't produce milk unless they've recently... Had a big hand up a, their bum and... Yeah. Or not bum, you know, bits. Yeah, you know, that's not, Dan doesn't quite understand <laughs> biology there. Did you, did you struggle to make your first child, Dan? <laughs> <laughs> Took a few goes. We've been doing it for ages and nothing's happening. <laughs> But yeah, that's that's oh that's uh, some of my funny bad advice. I oh, had, that's but terrible. Have you got any more? I've I've got a couple of yeah. I've got I'll chuck one more in that I um, and it's kind of a regret really. Looking back at university, I um, I just I, I remember my all my my primary focus at university was to have fun, which doesn't sound like bad advice at all. This is for people that are considering going to university. I had a really good time and had a whole good great life experience and all that and I got a degree out of it and things but I look back and think I remember there was just so many opportunities to 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 do networking and to meet people and to do really good stuff Mm. and use the resource at the university and all I did was rarely go to any lectures do the bare minimum for the first year anyway I Mm. eventually did all right but and just didn't didn't try and I just think if you are going to university do have fun but you know Mm. use all the Cool what, what does frustrate me though, Dan, I, I had a similar thing where I had a good time at university, but um, again, spent most of my money on Domino's pizza and vodka um, <laughs> and didn't put much effort in. So Dan and I have both admitted there we didn't put as much effort in as we should. Mm. Um, what did you get for, for, your, for your degree? What results did you get? Oh, just got something like a first or something. A first, a first. So Dan put no effort in and got a first. <laughs> no, I didn't put any effort in my first year. I was 2% off failing my first year and then I got scared and worked harder in my second and right. third year. I didn't get scared. What did you get, Lloyd? Uh, I th- I think I got a 2-2. Two, two, right. But I think I was very close to a third class, which is basically you're, you're, you've just passed, but don't tell yeah. anyone what you got because <laughs> they <laughs> yeah. won't be impressed uh, and won't yeah. help you in life. I think, I think I don't know. Have you ever used your degree in your life? You might have, I don't. Well, I, <laughs> actually, without my degree, I wouldn't have met my wife. Oh, really? Because I got a a temporary job when I came out of university, a temporary job at Boots um, over Christmas. Mm. And that's where my wife worked. And they, there was like, they hired eight new people at Christmas because it gets really busy. Mm. And they basically went through the eight of us and he was going down the line with this bit of paper the day we were starting. Mm. And he came to me and he went, oh, you're, you're working in the pharmacy. And I was like, I was thinking, it's a temporary... I thought I'd just be on the tilt. Like, <laughs> put me in the pharmacy. I've got absolutely no relevant qualifications. Yeah. And he said to me, because you're the only one with a degree. <laughs> so what he so, said. I, so I got a 2-2 I got in primary education to be a primary school teacher. 
<laughs> and that qualified me to to work in the pharmacy. Um, and that's where my lovely wife Sarah was working. I also working. love the story of how uh, your your flirting tactics. Oh, uh, right. <laughs> no, I've got anyway, to share this. I've got uh, what? <laughs> Lloyd used to, to flirt with Sarah. Bearing in mind, right, this is after uni, so he's he's an adult. I mean, how you must have. Been, he's actually squinting because he's so worried about me saying this. I can say this, can't I? But him. Um, you can say what you want, mate. He uh, his flirting tactics with Sarah when he first met her was to um, to flick elastic bands at her. Well, well I, I, I wouldn't say I was flirting. I was, <laughs> that's just what I was doing. Uh, in case it you, actually worked, though. In case you didn't hear, that wasn't when I was seven. That was actually <laughs> as an adult. Um, yeah. Yeah, and uh, it worked. So if anyone's looking for love out there, flick <laughs> elastic bands at your co-workers that you like. I feel sorry for you, isn't it? Yeah. Marry yeah. you and have kids. Yeah, and just be aware, any of my co-workers, if I flick elastic bands at you. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to watch out now. Um, uh, what no, else? Go, I, come I, I, ne- I never flick an elastic band at another girl, Sarah, just so you know. <laughs> um, so finally, you got? finally, on, my, this is a bit of a weird one that I was thinking about. Um, and it's, I remember a, a guy that gave me this advice. And it does make sense, but I've got a bit of a, con- uh, a different point. So this whole um, family first. Okay. Okay, so... so what it, a horrible way to hearing, live your life. No, but here, so hearing that, obviously it makes sense. You look after your close family, mm. make sure everyone, yeah, fine. But I find a lot of people use this to not help anyone else. Mm-hmm. And so this can be as small as, oh, I, I look after my family and no one else has in the people that live in your house. Mm. Or it could be kind of, you could extend this to, I look after the people in my country before Everyone other countries because, yeah. you know, let's look after our own. Mm. And I just think, the, the guy that was saying this to me, so I was, um, we were talking about some charity work at the time, things and donating to charity. And oh, he, you do charity work, he, do you <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not doing that just to, <laughs> yeah, actually I do a bit of charity work. Uh, no, so this was about just a small donation mm. to charity and we're in the same setting and he basically was justifying, I think, why he wasn't donating. Right, okay, yeah, Which yeah. is fine, like when, with the charity thing, you don't have to donate. It doesn't make yeah. you a bad person not to donate, yeah. but this was the context of the story. Mm. So he um, he sort of looked at me and said, "You know, we're, I'm not, we're not millionaires or anything. So you've got to focus on your family first, haven't mm. you? And then once you're mm. once you've achieved everything, then you can start helping mm. other people. And I just think it's a bad attitude to have because, like, I when I when I try and help someone else or give to charity, mm. I don't give them my son's dinner. <laughs> I think like, no, I don't go, no, Leo. You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> I don't go." Um, Leo, I'm I'm out to work with the homeless tonight, so no dinner for you. I'm taking it down there. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, Leo's primary school's calling me. I should probably pick that up. I can't believe you've just done that. <laughs> If uh, I would have done that, you would have gone mental, me. I I just need to justify something to the listeners. Go on. So I you you've probably hopefully you didn't listen to that whole phone call that I just took. So this is how how unprofessional in, in my, shit no, is that in my in my head. This is listen. You're gonna. Go on. Um, my phone rang and I looked down and it had the name of Leo's school uh, on it and I thought, oh, there might be an emergency, so I picked it up. But Leo's not at school, is he? When I picked up the phone, I realised Leo hasn't started school yet. Uh, and he's not at school. And that definitely wouldn't be to do with an emergency. Just someone calling about stuff. I'm just going to answer every call that comes now. Yeah. Where were we anyway before you rudely... Fa- family oh. first. So yeah. I was just saying... Um, yeah, so when you, when you help other people, it doesn't stop you helping your own family. Obviously, there's a, there's a point where if you're in a r- situation where you desperately need help yeah. and support, then you're not going to stop doing that and just, um, like you said, take, your, take food away from your own children and give yeah. it to someone else. But yeah. I think the kind of family first attitude is quite often an excuse, to not do a anything. reason to not help other people because you're, you're trying to justify, I only help, I help my... Do, I also think, I, I do get that. And I also think, thinking more broadly like the world you know like i'm only going to help my country or my Mm. community it's just pure luck that you've ended up on on that point of the map yeah and you're just the same as someone another point of the map but someone's just um positioned that as uh, you know we're this the uk you know or hundreds or thousands of years ago basically a white man just drew a line in the sand and said this side of it's my country Mm. that side of it's yours 
and for that reason we say well i'm only going to help people this yeah. line of that sand yeah. yeah and um yeah yeah so that's my thing i don't i don't i don't think we should look after our own before mm. others because i don't yeah. think it makes sense and i think it's it's an excuse to not help other people you're not going to join the edl any any time soon then i don't think so no no i might might do it it depends if i you know if we if we don't have any work next month i might just give it a go spend some time yeah but i don't think so okay cool so the next section we're going to talk about is about you being an anchor i'm going to do your job for you oh we uh, didn't do this last episode Mm. yeah so this one's slightly different for those listeners that haven't heard this before each week we talk about each other being shit basically and we called it lloyd's an anchor or dan's an anchor so this week it's lloyd's an anchor um normally we kind of just slag each other off and and talk about horrible things we've done and rubbish things we've done but this week's a bit of a different one because i just want to tell a bit of a funny story about a shit thing you've done oh that you told me the other day right um and it's to do with your worms (laughs) so so for those that, that lloyd's Lloyd basically, uh, if you listen to the last episode, R- Lloyd loves someone called Robbie Knox, who's a really cool YouTuber. We had him on the podcast last episode, a really mm. nice guy. And um, he makes, uh, he's got lots of videos about gardening and things, and he's got his own wormery. And Lloyd obviously saw that he did it and just wanted to make his own wormery because Robbie Knox did it. And Lloyd's really into gardening now. So what Lloyd did was Lloyd, basically a wormery, for those who don't know, and I'm not an expert, is where you basically get like a big box thing put old food in it put loads of worms in it the worms eat the food poo it out and make soil is that kind of right Lloyd? yeah make compost yeah and then don't they wee and then it makes this juice that you put on for, yeah for animal yeah feed like or something. basically worm diarrhea you just okay pour on your plants so anyway lloyd's making this worm wormery and um so if, to make it you need uh, like loads of worms 500 worms and um like boxes to put them in so lloyd orders these worms and these boxes and then he comes into it the other day and he went oh something funny's happened I've ordered 500 worms at home and they're at home with, with Sarah and Leo. And um, Hang, They're at home, set. they weren't just all over, crawling all over <laughs> our house. They were like in packaging. Um, but he's got a message from Amazon and what you're supposed to put them in is just delayed. So he's just got loads of worms <laughs> open in his house, haven't you? Yes, that, that was annoying that Amazon delayed the, the, the big tubs that they're supposed to go in so, so what, what have you done with your 500 so worms? i just just had a delivery of 500 worms nothing to do with them so i just had to fight i was desperately looking in my shed for something to put them in so yesterday i did i did put my god this podcast has taken a weird turn i just <laughs> realized I, I put my worms in this big tub thing that yeah. i found in the shed to put the lid on with some food and bit of bedding <laughs> oh, bedding ba- for worms. basically soil um <laughs> call it bedding because you know that's what we call it when in, in the wormery world yeah um and uh did some escape or something you said to me last yes, time so, we were so playing last COD, night, that, that, that was my plan obviously the actual thing i was supposed to use didn't turn up so it didn't work um me and sarah were just about to go to bed i thought check on just say goodnight you turned over and wasn't just there a worm on sarah's to, head to my worms and uh they were all just escaping out of the box uh, all over the floor just <laughs> trying to crawl away and there's 500 of them so <laughs> imagine trying to find 500 worms that were just spreading themselves oh. around you yeah so it didn't go exactly to plan but yeah i i have to admit ordering 500 worms before the thing that you we before having the in. thing you need to put them in definitely a mistake yeah. so lloyd's yeah. certainly an anchor, I am an anchor this week definitely an anchor Okay, right, to finish off the podcast uh, this week, Dan, we yep. are going to have, we did a speed round of, of failure before, mm-hmm. We're gonna do, I think that was episode two, episode two, two. two. Yeah, so if yeah. you like this, go and check it out, but this is going to be a speed round of bad business advice, so me and Dan have um, written our worst possible business advice, mm-hmm. and we're going to take it in turns to, to give each other this advice and see who can come up with the the worst and and the most and let us know somewhere. let us know who you think has won in giving the worst advice right and i need to get my myself ready to all i'm going to say is lauren good luck with uh moving the camera to the right person that's talking because this is going to be really quick so it's going to be impossible <laughs> so if you're watching this on uh, the knowlton youtube channel you can give lauren a mark out of 10 for if she <laughs> managed to keep up with us okay go on you start then are we yeah okay are we ready so for this bad re- business ready? advice so we're just speed rounding right yeah okay three okay let me just introduce it go on the bad business speed round with dan knowlton and lloyd knowlton from knowlton three two one let's go every time you meet a new potential oh oh no i read no uh, start again three two <laughs> one let's go if someone isn't interested give them your business card just in case Every time you meet a potential new client, give them a wet willy. (laughs) 
<laughs> if someone isn't interested in taking your business card, persuade them they should take it. Don't class personal hygiene as a priority in your life. Make sure you take laxatives for breakfast <laughs> if you're pitching a new client. <laughs> Teach course creators how to teach course creators how to teach course creators how to make courses that sell courses. Nice. Spread the word in your business network that everyone must drink cow's milk to prevent the cows from bursting. <laughs> Talk about how brilliant you are all the time. If someone asks for help or advice, send them an invoice prior to helping them. <laughs> <laughs> Eat poo for breakfast before meeting a new client. <laughs> oh my God, I'm so childish. Never eat at your desk. Hashtag vermin. <laughs> Listen to Trolls Online. This is a good one for you, actually. Listen to Trolls Online. They're probably right about how rubbish you are as a person. Oh, yeah, I should listen to that because they, they do tell me I'm rubbish as a person. <laughs> um, follow in Dan's footsteps. Never make drinks for your co-workers. If you wait long enough, they'll make you a drink. 10x everything. There's a reason you've got one mouth and two ears. You have one mouth so that the person you're talking to can focus on what you are saying. <laughs> Don't stop talking or ask them any questions. You are more important and interesting. <laughs> Become an aloe vera health drink salesperson. If you're in a position of authority, ensure you treat everyone like shit so they don't forget you're powerful. <laughs> Pretend you know what you're talking about. When someone gives you critical feedback, do not take it on board and improve. Make sure you shout at them and let them know they are wrong. <laughs> Use long words, it makes you sound like you know what you're talking about. Filter out the unimportant people that want to speak to you. Ask them, ask them their income, and if it's below yours, tut and walk away. <laughs> Is that all? Some it? great advice there. Oh, I have got through my list as well. Oh, have you done Nice. Yours? Yeah. Let us know who you think had the worst business advice there. I, I think I ha have been Dan's was more childish and mine was more weird. Yeah, yeah. I think very mature. They're done eat eating poo for breakfast. <laughs> 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 um, right. Thank you guys. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this. this bit of a weird one. This bad advice. Mm. Right? If you like that speed round, as I said, it's actually. Uh, Episode three that we had the speed round before that was mm. quite funny. So if you're new here, go back and listen to that. That was quite funny. Um, really happy to have you here as listeners. And don't forget Thanks, to guys. give us the review with the word vermin in somehow. I'm actually looking forward to seeing the, the two people that do that, like you said. Yeah, get creative. If you can slip vermin into your review and make it sound like a genuine review that no one would blink an eyelid to. We're going to read them out we'll on read the next, them out next time. Yeah. So we're, we're expecting a review from people like Robbie Knox, who, who we know listens. I mean, Robbie Knox says he's a listener. He's been on the podcast, mm. but I haven't seen any reviews. Who else? Let's, let's, let's try and name some names. Who actually listens that hasn't done a review, Lloyd? Um, well, I've named one of the three. <laughs> <laughs> um, who else says they has, listen... Has, Dad Knowlton left us a review. Dad Knowlton. I don't think he has, you know. And he, I know he listens every time. He would just probably put vermin with an exclamation mark. Yeah. Yeah. So that's two out of the three. Who's the third listener we've got? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's mum, but she shares an account with dad. So, oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. We look forward to those two reviews. Hashtag vermin. <laughs> um, and if you don't do it, dad. Vermin. Vermin. <laughs>